if you want financial independence, you need a different vehicle than a job. But if you just go in there and you sit on the desk and go, you, are, you have a job. Yeah. That's a J-O-B for you. Just over broke. As I mentioned before, this is part two, and we are still talking about the youth and how can the youth break into the property market. We have seen that the unemployment rate has risen extremely, back to 75%, which is a crisis, another pandemic. But we are here to talk all about that. And Ebo, an uh, educated man on this topic, who can literally give us the solutions to everything. And he's also opened his doors to those at home. If ever we need help, a mentor, whatever it is you need, all the details are on the screen. You have his name and this is exactly where you can find all these details and make contact because as we've mentioned in the first half, we cannot do this alone. We need a power team. Ebo, let's, let's pick it up from where we left off. Tell us more. So there's this notion of team that the people have to be working for you or working with you all the time. Mm. No, they don't. Uh, so you find that in my sphere, mm. I have people that I just rely on for just, like you call it, um, accountability partners. I just bounce things off them. Hey, I'm going to do A, B, C, D this time. Can you, can you check in with me and hold me accountable? Then there are those that you know, okay, I am going to, let's look at sectional title schemes. When we decided we're moving into the sectional schemes um, industry, yeah, yeah. right? You now go, who is the best at it? Or who has been doing this the longest? So we realized Professor Graham Paddocks is actually the author of all of these. Who do we have in our network that can get us to him? Because you always want to go closest to the source. Of course. Yeah. So that now is the people in our team. So if I need anything and I feel like, uh, you bounce it off the best and then you come back and you know that you are right. Mm. And I think that's also one way to figure out if your team is for you at the end of the day. Because you can have a team that is totally against you, that doesn't want to no, see No, then you don't have a team. Then you don't have a team. But I think that we, especially, again, youth, we mistake that. We have these, you know, circles, friends, whatever it may be. If you can't hold me accountable, if you can't call me out on my actions or if I'm doing something wrong, whatever the case may be, you're not, you're not there for me. The UCL just happened, right? And uh, I remember posting that I wish um, Pep wins. But then at the same time, I was torn because I wanted Chelsea to win. Now, here's a person that is supporting both teams at the same time. And yet I'm part of the team of both of them, right? When it comes to teamwork, you would have realized that all those people, and when Pep lost, what happened? Mm. The people called him out. They said, you selected the wrong team to right. start off with. Being the great leader that he is, he went, maybe I shouldn't have. But it's the best I thought at the time. Mm. So it's also being able to know that your team can give you feedback. Mm. And if you're confident about the decisions you made, you hold yourself up to it. Yeah, that's very true. We are on the, you know, on the topic of youth and things. Yeah. And I went, uh, did a little bit of my own research. Being a part of the youth, I'd like to think, I'm, yeah, I'm still with you guys. Um, I did my own research and I asked a lot of my friends and colleagues yeah. questions, right? And one of the biggest questions, and this is just to a group a little bit younger than I am right okay. now. One of the biggest questions they have is, am I not too young to start investing in property? Hmm. Can I ask this question differently? Please. To whom are you comparing your age to? because you'd find that there have been so many successful people in their 15s, 18s, 20s, whatever. So who are you, who comparing, are you comparing yourself, yourself to? to? Uh, that's, that's something you should really ask yourself. Right. The moment that thought comes into your head that I need to be a little bit better than I am today, that is divine inspiration letting you know that there is greater ahead of you to come. Now you have a choice. You have the choice of saying, okay, I'm going to go and get it done. Or no, I'm just going to chill and wait. And, and there's a trick. Um, every single thing that comes to you, don't be fooled and think that it is uniquely for you. Because when the seed comes to you, it's scattered. So another person has received it. Because whether you do it or you don't do it, nature will make it happen. Mm -hmm. It will happen without you. So then on that note, how do you suggest that the youth do start breaking into the property market? What is one way that we can start doing that? So at properties.com, we've started this um, session that we have after every metric exam, where we actually bring all the matriculants into our boardroom here, those that come, and we say to them, think of your life now as 
about to get into that taxi, mm. right? But you now do not know where the taxi is going. All you know is that it's going to a better place. Now, in knowing that it's going to a better place, here is the opportunity in real estate that you are never going to be told about. Real estate as a career. Real estate as a career. You now need to say to yourself, okay, great, I've learned the math, I've learned all of these things, but I don't want to um, go every single day. You know, I, I share this all the time. I say, if you want financial independence, you need a different vehicle than a job. Yeah. You want to be able to work for yourself. And I don't, when I say work for yourself, I don't mean that if you are at Discovery and they pay you a salary of 30000 you are worshipping Adrian Gore. No, yeah. because you could be there getting your 30000 but you're working for yourself because every single day you are there, you are doing two things. You acting meaningfully and it's with purpose because mm -hmm. you know you get to middle management and you get to the C-suite. And the reason you want to get to the C-suite is because you want to change discovery this way and that way and that way. Right. So it's still working for you. Yeah. It's not a job. Right. But if you just go in there and you sit on the desk and go. Right. And earn a basic salary. You, are, you have a job. Yeah. That's a J-O-B for you. <laughs> just over broke. <laughs> Never yeah. heard that before. So, yeah. Just over broke. Yeah, okay. Just over broke. Wow. No matter how much money comes to you, you over You will broke. just stay there. Yeah, because you're gonna just, be broke. You right. stuck. So just before we um just before we wrap up the show, right, yeah. to everyone watching, I think it's so important because and I, I think it's also important to understand that we come from different backgrounds. And there's a lot of advice I've been given from people and I'm like, but you're saying that from a very privileged point. I cannot do that. I cannot. I do not have the ability to get into that taxi, confidently say that I'm ready to go to the next destination, even though I know where the taxi is going to end up. Because what if I don't have enough money to pay for the taxi? Can I share a story with Please you? Please do. And now I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be very, very vulnerable. Um, and the vulnerability is basically something I saw when I was growing up. It was a certain Sunday. We had no money at home, okay? My mom had nothing. She only had, I think it was like, back in the days, it was 100 CDs, which now will be like 0 0.0001 cents, okay? Mm. Cause it's like, it wasn't even money. Mm. And she broke it up. She gave myself a coin. She gave my brother a coin. We had our cousin that was staying with us. He got a coin, she got a coin and we went. And she insisted we take those coins and put it in the collection bowl and we already had plans because with that coin you can buy some sweets mm -hmm. and you know there's not been food for a while so here's a treat mm -hmm. um, but on that day something drastic happened we learned the power of faith mm -hmm. we learned that what you speak out into the world before it happens if you believe it it will happen because what my mom spoke on that day was to say we do not have yet. But by the time this day ends, all that we want will be fulfilled. And somebody that didn't, that owed my mom so much money and it just disappeared, mm -hmm. found us on the roadside, called my mom out. You know, it was before phones. Yeah, yeah. So he said, I had forgotten where you live. So I've never been able to pay you back this money. I don't know what made me look this way to see you guys walking we're walking home, mm. gave us a lift, and he paid my mom. Wow. And that's how we bought the first car in our home. Right. That's faith. That is faith. And, and I actually had this chat a few nights ago, and I was like, you know, when you feel like you're just losing faith, what can you do? And again, it's that, you know, that pick me up thing. It's, what, it's, about, it's about experiential learning, thinking back to the story when that's all you had. And you're like, but if faith worked for me then, and also just, Looking back, right, and I think we, we struggle to identify when things have been given to us. So we ask for things, it happens years, months later, and we're like, but you asked you for this. You don't go back. You, we don't go back enough. Mm. We, not, we don't go back and we look at how, we, we need to be grateful for these yeah. things, right? There's so many things, and I think that's so powerful. Can I, I give you an alphabet thing? Please, please. So it's A, B, C, right? Uh -huh. You need to aspire. That, unfortunately, nobody can give you. Yeah. Okay. But I know that the moment you start realizing that you don't have something, whether you like it or not, 
that's the beginning of aspiration. Because mm. if your eyes get open to say that I actually have less, there's a seed that's been planted to say, aspire for more. Because what you have is not enough. Yeah. Then the second one comes, which is B. B says, believe. Believe that because I didn't know that I didn't have, and now I know, and I'm aspiring, and that didn't come from me, mm. that there's something else that will carry through. So I believe it will happen. Mm. Now, of course, it will just not happen. So you need C. You need to commit to the journey. Right. I don't know what's happening. What? <laughs> need to commit to the journey. It's okay. What you're feeling is perfect. Don't hold it back. Wow. Yeah. Ah. yeah. I mean, Aspire, I believe, commit. Now. Aspire, believe, commit. You know, sometimes we, we need to let this happen, eh? Um, yeah, for me, it was... It was Tihav Eka holding a sword to our throat. I always had this funny belief that I could never go it alone by myself. Mm. So sitting in Standard Bank, as a wealth advisor, I was with Liberty. Then I moved to Standard Bank. And I always said, I have the book on my shelf, The Greatest Financial Planner, How to Become the Greatest Financial Planner. And I said, one day, I will have that property on Commissioner Street. You know that? Um, thinny building, that standard bank building, it's a, it looks like a Colosseum yeah, yeah, when you're yeah. looking at it. Yeah. So I'll have it. And then on the floor, I'm going to just have a kitchen set up mm -hmm. where people sit and they do financial planning like a kitchen, like a family. They'll right. come through and we'll do it together. Yeah. And I thought it's not possible and I would never get it because I need someone to go with me. Right. Then I sat and I realized after that chain broke, so he asked us, what is our greatest fear? Mm after doing a whole lot with our mind. So I knew at the time that my greatest fear was the fear of going it alone. Mm. So I wrote it on the stick. We didn't know he would put it to our throat, but then he put it to our throat and he asked somebody to push through it. Oh, wow. And we're thinking, shit, you going to stab me, dude? Like, yeah. I'll die. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't. And the stick broke. And when it broke, I said, I can do it. Because mm. I'd sold the idea to FNB and they said, we won't do it, forget it. Yeah. And I wrote it down and that's how Black Wealth was born. Wow. And NetBank took it and I went to Durban. I'd never been to Durban in my life. Went to Peter Marysburg, Cape Town. Wow. All the big NetBank offices. That's amazing. So let it happen. Let it happen. Um, I'm not even going to apologize for being Don't. emotional. Um, I think that you we, let's talk about because you spoke about um that was your biggest fear at the time right do you have i mean accomplishing so much that you you know you've and i'm sure there's so many things you still want to accomplish what would you say your fear is right now sitting in that chair your biggest fear sorry my biggest fear also is my greatest motivator mm. my biggest fear is that god forbid mm. i pass away tomorrow mm. that I would not have done half of the things that I know I am capable of right. doing. Because I'm at that point in my life, I know my capabilities. So every single day when we get out, mm -hmm. it is, Lord, how am I getting to the next one, mm -hmm. right? So in today, I'm going to do as much as possible so that when I put my head down, right. I can say today I worked my hardest mm -hmm. to deserve the sleep. That tomorrow I may come back onto this battlefield to do more. Right. Just to get one step closer to that goal. So to keep pushing. So exactly. the greatest fear is not doing enough for me at the moment. Mm, nice. I like that. And I think just before we end off, again, the topic of the day is Youth Day. Um, uh, I wanted to find out one of the a, a lucrative piece of advice, right? We know what the current state of the unemployment rate is among the youth right now. It actually recently just went up to 75%. Um, that is the current pandemic, I think, as well, alongside with COVID-19, yep. alongside with gender-based violence. These are the chats we need to have. Yep. But what would you, a lucrative piece of advice that you would give the youth today? So I would say if you're watching this right now and you are under the age of 37 and you don't have a, basically you don't have a means of earning an income, if real estate is it for you, okay, if you've heard, if this show has done anything for you and you, you're now thinking real estate is it. If it is, get in touch with our offices because what we do is we, we've partnered up with the EAB for this, which is the One Learner Program. Mm -hmm. And we've then advanced a little bit further where we've now decided we want to build 
a different set of agents. It's not salespeople that is all schmoozy, schmoozy, let me talk you into giving me your property and let me mm -hmm. sell it. It is the people with hearts that say, everybody needs a roof over their heads, guys. So at some point, somebody's buying and somebody's selling. At some point, somebody's renting and somebody's letting. Mm. So join in by giving your service. Mm. Learn, because there's also nothing in this world that is not learnable. People say, oh, no, I'm not a salesperson. I don't know if I've, I've, you've ever um, picked up why and how we got into this whole sales industry to start off with, because my friends will tell you, honors class, I had a backpack, Yeah. right? I would go to class with a backpack and leave before everybody else sees me, because I was that shy kid. Right. So how does a shy kid now end up sitting here and sell and talk to the greatest people and meet um, African presidents and not quiver? Yeah. It's because you get to realize that every single day is a sale. Everyone you meet in is a sale. So if I was able to sell myself to my lecturer mm -hmm. by getting great marks, mm. heck, I can do anything else that I want. To. Exactly. And we recently spoke about this. You yourself, you're a brand. You're a brand. You're a person. And I think now is the perfect time for us to establish what that is. Right. And I do I do think that we need to understand that. Uh, and I actually posted something the other day about um, metamorphosis, mm -hmm. change, transition. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Why did you say, oh, shoot? <laughs> oh, shoot. I think it's important. I'm going through that. Yeah. You know, the caterpillar phase uh cocoon everything metamorphosis the change um i love using metaphors and i think that your brand is also not something that is a set it's not, it's not station yeah we need a t transition um i just want to end off quickly evo because of, do you want to say something like to that this. please please <laughs> so now i'm i'm you now um i'm going through the exact same thing um and i shared this with the team the other day i walked into the office and i was very they didn't really understand it. They thought I'm angry. Um, but for me, it was, it was just realizing that crap. All that we are building can break at any point if somebody else doesn't do what they have to do. Because we own another company, which is Sentin Hotel Apartments and Leisure. And if you go into my office, you see I've drawn the first building we went into. I've drawn it on the board. Mm. And recently, some person thought they can interfere with that. Mm. And I realized, here's my opportunity to grow bigger, way bigger than we are. Right. I came to them and started, guys, forget about it. Throw this away. This is how we're doing it. Yeah. You are calling every single homeowner in that building. Right. And you're telling them we are giving them guaranteed rental. So why should their places be sitting empty? Mm. And we rent out the whole building and we'll then re-rent it mm -hmm. and we'll grow. That's these, these things choice. come so that you change. I think another very powerful question, and thank you to the team that is in the room today, um, is, um, and this is, I think, a, a question that a lot of the people at home are asking themselves now, right? They are, they have a job, and they are just over broke, as you said, and they are, or they are unemployed. Mm. They've just graduated. They're sitting with a degree, mm. right, at home. They've just graduated from the top institution in South Africa. How? Do they start? And I know that a lot of people um, say, but just start. Mm, mm. No, I that's not that, that, no. that really. No. We how can't just start. do we, yeah, how do we start? So let me answer it for the three people. Mm. So the one person is the one that has never gone into the job field at all. Right. You're actually the best off because your canvas is blank. Do they have a degree? Yeah, the ones that has been educated. Okay. Or even, let's say they don't have a degree, they just matriculate. Yeah. Do you know that the first person that sold me my first property mm -hmm. came to the showing in his matric pants, his gray pants and his white shirt? Wow. Yeah. So that's no tertiary education? Yes, he had, not, he, he had not gotten his matric result. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, with him, maybe he was a bit better off because daddy gave him the opportunity. But for me, it made me realize that we can do it too. Of course. You can do it. Because once you've made up your mind, this is what I want to do, I don't want to be broke. Mm. I don't want my family to go to bed hungry, mm. ever. Yeah. And you know what? Now I'm going to be a little bit more vulnerable again. Mm. Even sometimes when you climb up the ladder, there will come a time that you will fall. Yeah. And that things that you didn't want may happen. 
I remember this because it was my son's second birthday. Mm. And at that time, with all the properties and stuff that we have, in my bank account and in my pocket was only 200 bucks. So those of you that know my son was born in 2013, you would know that 2015, on the 17th of August 2015, in my bank was a lot of minuses because the bank owes us or we owe the bank lots of money. Yeah, yeah. And, but in my pocket was 200 bucks and I had to split it. I had to use 100 rand to buy him his toy car and I had to give 100 bucks to my mother to make magic. Right. Which she did. Right. Okay. So even when you climb the ladder, you, you may fall back, mm. but it's how you pick yourself up and go again. So that person that has not started, you are well off. Mm -hmm. Start off by now saying, okay, I'm going to go and learn how to sell. A bow Green is here to help you in the real estate academy of properties.com. We will help you learn how to sell and basically make real estate a career that will be for you a business legacy. That is very important. To the second person that is in between, you've actually had COVID now kick you off. Mm. So again, going back to your metamorphosis, yeah. you know, the butterfly sometimes dies, right? Right. But it, it's actually the phoenix. You burn and then you rise again. Yeah. You rise again. The rise of the phoenix. Yeah. You rise again. So COVID has gotten you down. You lost your job and everything. But you are now a little bit better off again because when you got laid off, you are given a pension right. or you are in the process of getting your pension. Right. So you will have some sort of capital. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor. Do not go and sit with any financial advisor in any bank and go and take your money and put it in a retirement annuity and lock it away mm. because you will not have the ability to grow from there. Mm. Sit with a, a qualified realtor or a qualified um financial advisor that would rather say to you go and buy the property but that's how you do the calculations right. go and buy the fiscal property mm. with that money okay and then take it from there yeah. where you now treat that property as a business because every time you collect your rent you won't live off at all yeah you divide it if if we could do magic with 200 you'll be surprised what you can do when you decide that you know what that is important that is not I need the f bread and the sugar mm. and a little bit of butter mm. and my stomach is full. Or even another great thing when I was broke, oats and lentils. Yeah. No, for real. Yeah. Lentils can do magic. It's, it's meat. Yeah. It's everything. Literally. Literally. And you can cook it in different forms. Right. So you still get your full nutrients. Mm. So there we've just gotten the solution yeah. to be so broke. You live differently. We don't want that. We don't want that. Yeah, you cut it. So you don't want that. But, um, just the things that you do differently. So mm. you've got the money, go and buy um, properties that you start off with. Then there's the other guy that's saying, I'm actually still here at the job. Don't leave your job. Mm. Don't. You only leave when you... So you say, how did I retire? Yeah. Financial freedom is the point where your passive income meets your living expenses. Because mm -hmm. everything after that is the ability to do what you want to do. And before that is when you don't leave, right? Because work you towards, yeah. You're taking to give, you're mm. taking to give. So literally you're working for Pick and Pay and Woolworths and everybody else. You know, we've heard like on the show quite a few success stories of people who just up and left, right? But I think it's very important to know that your story is not their story. Can, can I tell you something? Yeah. Nobody up and leaves. Mm. Nobody. If you up and leave, you're stupid. Sorry. Yeah. Because it means you had no plan. Mm. It's almost like going to stand on Table Mountain and saying, I'm jumping mm. off. Mm. What's catching you? Right. You would have known that there's a net in between Table Mountain and Lion's head. Yeah. head yeah. So that when you fall, something will bounce you up. You always know. Right. You all, Even those that say, I just up and left. Like I tell people tell people that on the 13th of September 2013 that's when I wrote my resignation and told mm -hmm. my boss um, thank you very much I actually didn't need this job I have been here serving my purpose I really love being here mm -hmm. but now I think I've outgrown you and I'm Ooh. going to become your competitor so thanks here is it wow that's exactly how the conversation went wow uh, and I walked out 
knowing that I'm stepping into black wealth mm -hmm. and we're doing financial consulting by ourselves, mm. for ourselves. And you had a plan, exactly. Yes. So everyone has a plan. Yeah. So build your plan. Make sure you know mm. when is that exit day. Mm. And when it happens, have a bit of cushion. Of course. Have a bit of cushion. A nice, uh, yeah. yes. It doesn't need to be a good landing. No, no. But just land. You don't need to land on your feet. Bounce. But yeah, you know, someone said to me yesterday, you know, it looks like, yeah, it looks like you've got this figured out. It looks like you found your feet. And I was like, let me tell you we something. Don't. <laughs> I found my feet. I'm not walking. No. I'm not balanced. But so, I mean, obviously everyone doesn't need to know what your next step is or what yeah, your plan yeah. is. But to you, it seems as if I, and that's fine. Let that be my story. Yes. I found my feet. Yes. I'm walking fine. I'm going to close it off now, Eva, because I think we We're are. We're going to be here forever, right? We've got quite a lot, you know, and, I, and this, I'm quoting you. Uh, you said, our purpose on this earth is to live meaningfully and purposefully, to be efficient and effective in living your dream. Right, and you said it is the master, oh, here's your title, <laughs> to master the art of leveraging the skills and knowledge and the time of others. Yeah. So, yes, I did take the easy way out, as Ebo <laughs> called me out for earlier, um, because I did everything. I have mastered everything right now, sitting in this room with you. I, I know that I need to leave here leveraging in every room I step into, what can I take from you? What can you give me? F this, this is free. Knowledge is free. And knowledge is something no one can take from you, right? But knowledge isn't something you can... I guess you can leave it behind. Yes, it could be part of your generational wealth. And mm -hmm. I guess you could. Yeah, but with that being said... Yes, yeah, being documented like this, right? With that being said, how do you continue to live a meaningfully and purposefully? Just live this life of that... So I'll tell you, yeah. in today, as I've sat here now, as you realize the theme throughout my whole life is acquire knowledge mm -hmm. and impact others. Mm -hmm. So in sitting here, I've learned from you as much as you've learned from me. Mm. There's somebody that's watching that is now being impacted. Mm. Okay. As soon as I step out of here, we have the whole team at properties.com mm. that as we stand in here, the business has not died. Mm. Yeah. Because we're leveraging their skill sets. The agents are out selling. Right. We will get a cut of their revenue. Of course. Of course. Okay. My greatest mentors that are in the field are still there providing us advice. Mm. I'm sure now if somebody's got a query on sectional title schemes and my administrators don't have an answer, they've got somebody they can go and yeah. ask now and answer that question even though I'm not there. 100%. It's also then the systems that you put in place and how you empower the people around you. Yeah. So she has that free will. She knows who to call. Um, any that is now behind the scenes, mm. we're leveraging her skill set and her time. Right. Because she's recording our events right. and she's sharing. Mm -hmm. And she's studying more every day and she's sharing. Mm. And her just sitting in this room is also educating, educating. learning more every day. And I think, I think what I'm going to take from this so is, again, efficiency. that ecosystem. You know, that it needs to... and it needs to flow. Right. And there's something I learned, you know, back in when I was also doing my honors was that the power of a circle. So I did drama therapy. Mm -hmm. And within psychology, the power of a circle is so much better to... Like, you know, boardrooms, it's this long, straight table. Mm -hmm. And um, one is always at the head of the table. And then there's someone, yeah. And it just... It, it, when you look at a boardroom, it already defines the roles. We already know walking in there, I need to... Whoever's at the head of the table, and you bow down to that man. But when we're in a circle, we're all equal. Did you see my logo before you came here? I have you researched have, the, the logo uh, Yeah, I've definitely seen it, yeah. Okay. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, it changed. <laughs> really? So if you looked, up till this year, the logo of property.com was that circle with, yeah, the, with yeah, the painted yeah. hand yeah. and property springing out of yeah. it. Because that's how we began. Now it's the thumb, which okay. is putting in place your unique identity. Nice. Because when you're in a circle, you still need to give your unique value, 100%. but it needs to flow. 100%. Just because of time, Evo, I'm so sorry. We're it's gonna have to great. cut this. It's been absolutely it's been amazing. Great. And I hope that, and I'm sure, actually, I'm sure we've impacted and imparted knowledge on those at home. So thank you again, Evo. Uh, Thank you again to everyone watching at home. I do sincerely hope that you've taken something from this amazing conversation. You've heard, we've given you, you've given them places to, to network, what to look up, how to research certain things, educational 
an educational moment was received here today and I hope that you too feel the same way and do not forget you can catch us live every Wednesday night this is the first time home by a show we'll see you guys again next week take care and stay warm